Chers collègues, je vous invite euh, à rejoindre vos places parce que nous allons démarrer incessamment notre assemblée plénière qui est la 132e du genre que le Comité européen des régions a organisé jusqu'à ce jour. D'abord, je vous demande si vous êtes d'accord avec l'ordre du jour de notre réunion, tout en sachant que nous avons proposé de faire passer l'avis de M. Yadla du premier au second jour, ainsi que le, de passer l'avis de M. Janssen un peu plus tôt jeudi matin. Je ne vois pas d'objection, c'est très bien. Est-ce que quelqu'un a des objections sur notre dernière... Euh, sur, sur le procès verbal de notre dernière réunion, ce n'est pas le cas, c'est très bien aussi, donc il est adopté. Je voudrais souhaiter une cordiale bienvenue à une délégation de maires ayant participé au défi des villes numériques, le Digital Cities Challenge. C'est une initiative de coaching lancée par la Commission européenne pour aider 41, 41 villes à élaborer et à mettre en œuvre les politiques numériques favorisant la croissance économique et le bien-être des citoyens, citoyens, soyez les bienvenus. Et c'est une très bonne idée de venir nous rejoindre au moment où nous avons un important débat pour lequel j'ai maintenant le grand plaisir d'accueillir parmi nous Madame euh, la commissaire euh, Corinna Kretschou. Chère Madame Kretschou, soyez la bienvenue chez nous une nouvelle fois et aujourd'hui au début d'un grand débat que nous aurons à, après votre passage ici, sur un ensemble d'avis que nous avons à remettre dans le cadre des différentes réglementations à adopter dans, pour, le futur, pour la future période de programmation euh, de l'Union européenne. En effet, aujourd'hui, nous adoptons l'ensemble de nos avis sur la politique de cohésion ainsi que l'avis sur la politique agricole qui inclut aussi le volet sur le développement rural. Cela veut dire que malgré un calendrier très serré, nous allons disposer d'une position institutionnelle à temps pour influencer le Parlement européen et le Conseil de l'Union européenne sur la politique de cohésion. On est donc en quelque sorte « just in time ». Au-delà de la politique de cohésion, c'est même presque l'ensemble des avis liés au cadre financier pluriannuel qui, qui auront été adoptés à la fin de notre session euh, de ces deux jours, sachant en effet que les autres avis avaient déjà été votés en octobre et il y a juste quelques-uns, notamment celui sur Erasmus, qui passera en février. Je suis très content que le travail sur, euh, soit sur le point d'être achevé et je me réjouis aussi de la très bonne coordination entre nos différents rapporteurs qui avaient une vingtaine d'avis à formuler et la cohérence est quelque chose qui est évidemment très important en la matière. Comme j'ai déjà eu souvent l'occasion de, de le rappeler, notre vrai travail commence cependant avec l'adoption la, de ces avis. Il ne se termine pas parce qu'il faut maintenant faire en sorte que notre position se retrouve le plus possible dans les règlements finaux. J'ai déjà pu constater que de nombreux amendements au Parlement européen reprenaient déjà nos positions, ce qui veut dire que nos rapporteurs ont été particulièrement proactifs. Je vous en félicite. Ce n'est qu'ainsi que l'on pourra renforcer la crédibilité de notre comité et augmenter ainsi l'influence des régions et des villes dans le processus décisionnel européen. Un grand travail reste cependant à faire au niveau des États membres. On l'a vu, sur la gouvernance à multiniveau et le concept de partenariat, les tentations de recul existent. Sur le lien entre la politique de cohésion et le semestre européen, les solutions simplistes et idéologiques subsistent, au détriment des réalités de nos territoires. De plus, certains continuent à confondre simplification et recentralisation. Le Comité européen des régions défend sans ambiguïté la simplification de la politique de cohésion, mais pas au prix d'une recentralisation, évidemment. Enfin, sur la coopération territoriale, les États membres se montrent encore frileux. Par exemple, pour le mécanisme européen 
transfrontaliers. La proposition de la Commission européenne rencontre de fortes oppositions au Conseil. Sur tous ces sujets, et une fois les avis votés, j'espère que chacun d'entre vous utilisera ces avis pour porter dans la presse de son pays et auprès de ses ministres nationaux la bonne parole des régions et des villes européennes en faveur d'une politique de cohésion ambitieuse à l'échelle européenne. Ce travail est très important, c'est même peut-être le plus important que nous avons à faire dans les euh, mois à venir. C'est aussi le travail sur lequel nous avons la plus grande marge d'amélioration. Je compte donc sur chacun, sur chaque groupe, sur chaque euh, groupe national, pour que nous puissions vraiment diffuser nos positions. Mais, mais avant d'adopter nos avis, nous avons aujourd'hui le plaisir de débattre encore une fois avec nos rapporteurs et la commissaire en charge de la politique régionale. Madame Kretschou, chère Corina, le micro est maintenant à vous pour une introduction avant le débat avec nos membres. Thank you very much, Karl uh, Heinz, uh, President Lambert, uh, dear members, uh, ladies and uh, gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. I am very happy to be here today with you. Uh, you are making uh, an important contribution to the debate on the future of Europe and uh, on the future of our cohesion policy, on the future of our regions in the European Union. And I would like to congratulate you particularly on the speed uh, because you have uh, already produced uh, solid opinions and did it uh, very quickly. In uh, our journey to get the future programs ready, it helps to have uh, pace setters, pace setter people who set an example uh, in moving forward and your work on the legislation has set the, play, the pace for the Council for the Parliament, for all of us, and thank you once again for your support. I would like uh, to pay a particular tribute uh, to the Cohesion Alliance. It was of crucial importance. So thank you to all of you, uh, Marco and Karl Heinz, for this uh, common effort that we did together. Because during the most difficult days of the multi-annual financial framework preparation, You gave a voice to European regions and cities, a voice of belief in European cohesion policy, a voice of support for our foundational be belief in our Europe that there will not be any region left behind. And uh, your voice is heard again today. Your opinions today provide uh, support, as uh, Karl Heinz said, in three key areas. First, your support on the partnership uh, uh, principle is very important because the success of regional policy is firmly based on regional partners, regional authorities and local authorities, civil society and uh, social partners. You deliver the policy on the ground. You know the difficulties. You know what is needed, what, what uh, can be simplified. You deliver uh, it with your ideas. You deliver it with your local knowledge. You, and uh, mo most and foremost, you deliver cohesion policy with your energy, your passion, your determination to improve the life of the people of, in your region. So thank you once ag again for an effective regional policy, which is only possible with strong regional partners. Second, thank you for your support on a partnership agreement for all member states. We need this strategic overview. We need this coordination between funds and between programs. We need these discussions with all the key partners, regional, local, civil society, social partners. This is why partnership agreements for all member states are necessary, regardless of numbers of programs, regardless of size of allocation. There is no room for double standards in our view. My position was made uh, crystal clear during the General Affairs Council last week, where you know a proposal is emerging to provide exception to the mandatory character of the partnership agreement. And uh, I really said that uh, for the Commission, we, firm, uh, we stay very firm on our 
uh, in our position. So no matter how much is an envelope for a member states, we need a strategy for all member states, not uh, one, se one class and second class member states. Third, we agree on the importance of local development. Europe close to citizens, driven by local needs, planned with local people, delivered in partnership with local people. This is development by the people, for the people, with the people. This is not just a simple declaration. They are not just words. It is our clear political commitment and policy objective five, a Europe closer to the citizens, translates the commitment into reality on the ground. We have provided various tools, a broader and more flexible menu of territorial instruments, the Euro European Urban Initiative, which brings together all the urban actions, a common set of rules for local development under cohesion policy, and the Agricultural Fund for Rural Development. But, uh, of course, the goal of all these tools is to empower regions, to empower cities, to empower local people. We must show citizens what Europe is doing for them. I now turn to another issue which still needs uh, to be clearing up. Another issue on top of the mandatory character of partnership agreement, which needs a solution. It is the 5 plus 2 programming issue. I know you have reservations and concerns, and I want to hear those concerns in a moment when the, you will have the, I will have the privilege to hear for you. But uh, I would like just to explain our idea why we would like to have this uh, room of, of maneuver and flexibility. I know that you support the principle and you support a more flexible policy one that takes account of uh, emerging circumstances. I know that this can be done without hindering long-term pro uh, projects. I know this because it has worked in the past. Projects have continued past the uh, performance review. Projects have spanned two programming pe periods, and this has worked. So uh, we have just proposed that to have a midterm review after five years because um, the lesson learned by me in the last four years of the Commission for Regional Policy is that we cannot see seven years in advance what life is brings to us. So I'm uh, ready to hear your views, but I would like to tell you in uh, conclusion, thank you once again for your support in so many areas uh, in the last hard year that we had to prepare the next multi-annual financial framework. I welcome your strong support for the partnership principle and the partnership agreement. And of course, as I said before, I am looking forward to hearing your views. Merci beaucoup, Madame la Commissaire. Et sans tarder, je vais ouvrir le débat en rappelant un principe qui vaut cette fois-ci encore plus que pour les fois précédentes. Je suis obligé de, res de faire respecter strictement, et ça veut dire bien ce que ça veut dire, strictement le temps de parole, parce que sinon nous n'en sortirons pas, ni maintenant, ni plus tard, ni demain. Et nous avons maintenant inscrit 15 personnes et nous devons clôturer ce débat vers 16h15. Donc, soyez le plus concis possible, mais dites quand même ce que vous avez, ce que vous avez envie de dire. Et on commencera avec euh, Michael Schneider. Vielen Dank, Herr Präsident, Frau Kommissarin, herzlich willkommen hier im Ausschuss der Regionen. Es ist heute eine wichtige Etappe auf einem Weg, den wir schon länger gemeinsam gehen. Wir haben hier 1900, 2016 begonnen, uns über die Zeit nach 2021 Gedanken zu machen. Wir haben im Mai 2017 eine Stellungnahme Zukunft der Kohäsionspolitik verabschiedet, hier in diesem Saal und dabei die Kohäsionsallianz ins Leben gerufen. Das war eine spontane Aktion, die sich als extrem erfolgreich erwiesen hat. Wichtig auf diesem Weg war, dass wir immer in engem Kontakt mit Ihnen waren und im engen Kontakt mit Fachleuten Ihrer GD, Ihrer Generaldirektion. 
Und die Tatsache, dass Ihre Vorschläge, Ihre Strukturfondsverordnungsvorschläge, die Sie im Mai dieses Jahres publiziert haben, in vielen Punkten Vorschläge von uns aufgegriffen haben, ist Ergebnis dieser langjährigen, guten und intensiven Zusammenarbeit. Dafür möchte ich mich ausdrücklich bedanken. Ich denke, das ist im gemeinsamen Interesse, dass wir da gute Ergebnisse erzielen. Grundsätzlich begrüßen wir also diese Vorschläge, insbesondere die, die allgemeine Verordnung. Natürlich haben wir einige Punkte, wo wir sagen, das, das kann man besser machen. Und einige Punkte will ich hier ansprechen in dieser allgemeinen Aussprache. Ich greife Ihre Frage auf, 5 plus 2, wo kommen unsere Einwände her? Wir haben nichts gegen 5 plus 2, wir haben nichts gegen Flexibilität. Wir wollen, die, die Regeln sind nur unklar. Die Vorschläge sind unklar. Was wir vermeiden wollen und was nicht passieren darf, ist, dass wir nach fünf Jahren bei null neu beginnen für die restlichen zwei Jahre. Wir müssen die Chance haben, von Anfang an zumindest für die letzten zwei Jahre schon einmal indikativ festzulegen, wo wir die Mittel einsetzen wollen, wofür wir die Mittel einsetzen wollen. Das ist unser Problem. Drei weitere Einzelpunkte. Sie haben, und das ist gut so, ein Sicherheitsnetz vorgesehen. 76 Prozent, darunter soll niemand fallen. Der Bezugsrahmen ist aber die nationale Ebene und das wird vielen, vielen Situationen in Mitgliedstaaten nicht gerecht, in denen die Regionen sehr unterschiedlich gestellt sind, zum Beispiel in Deutschland, in Spanien, in Italien, in anderen Mitgliedstaaten. Deshalb unser Vorschlag, Safety Net 76 Prozent ja, aber mit Bezug auf die regionale Ebene, so wie die regionale Ebene heute gestellt ist, dass keine Region heute, unter ihrer heutigen Mittel von 100 Prozent unter 76 Prozent fällt. Dann Kofinanzierung. Da haben Sie weitgehende Vorschläge gemacht, die Kofinanzierungssätze der EU zu senken. Da sage ich, und ich gehöre einer Regierung an, einer, einer Region mit Haushaltsbefugnis, das schaffen wir nicht. Diese Reduzierung der Kofinanzierungssätze, das schaffen wir nicht. Wir müssen die Schuldenbremse einhalten. Wir brauchen Haushaltskonsolidierung in unseren Regionen. Und deshalb können wir nicht in erheblichem höheren Maße kofinanzieren. Insbesondere für die Übergangsregionen sollte die EU-Kofinanzierung nicht unter 70 Prozent sinken. Dritter Punkt. Sie haben einen, einen Vorschlag von uns aufgenommen, das GDP, um weitere Indikatoren zu erweitern. Stimmen wir zu. Wir sind aber der Meinung, Demografische Probleme sind ein Indikator, der nicht genügend berücksichtigt wird. Man muss künftig stärker demografische Probleme in den Regionen berücksichtigen. Demografische Probleme behindern Wettbewerbsfähigkeit, behindern Wachstum. Und das ist genau das, was, was im Mittelpunkt der Kohäsionspolitik steht, das zu vermeiden. Deshalb bitte als zusätzlichen Indikator auch noch die äh, demografischen Probleme. Und schließlich und letzter Punkt. Sie haben Gute Vorschläge gemacht zur Entbürokratisierung, zum Verwaltungsabbau. Was ich aus den Verhandlungen höre, stimmt mich sehr misstrauisch. Ich habe die Sorge, dass in den Verhandlungen von den Mitgliedstaaten, vom Parlament wieder draufgesattelt wird. Das, was Sie rausgenommen haben, wird wieder reingenommen. Und am Ende haben wir das gleiche Maß an Bürokratie, was wir heute haben, was wir beide verhindern wollen. Da appelliere ich an die Verhandler, hier nicht wieder draufzusatteln. Alles andere sage ich anschließend von oben, wenn wir die Stellungnahme beraten. Vielen Dank. Le prochain orateur, c'est Katusha Marini. Grazie, commissaria. Grazie, Corina. Ancora una volta ci dimostra con la sua presenza qui oggi che in plenaria discuteremo i nostri pareri sulla programmazione dei fondi strutturali, la sua vicinanza, ma anche il fatto di essere stata sempre un'alleata dei, dei governi locali e regionali e anche quando abbiamo la, lanciato insieme a tanti attori e protagonisti l'alleanza per la coesione l'abbiamo avuta a fianco anche perché noi siamo consapevoli che la politica di coesione è il volto migliore dell'Europa nei territori è il volto migliore di un'Europa che parla concretamente alle imprese, ai cittadini, agli amministratori locali come gruppo socialista vorremmo evidenziare alcuni punti che abbiamo condiviso in vista dei regolamenti finali. Abbiamo condiviso l'architettura, un approccio alla politica di coesione per tutte le regioni d'Europa, il mantenimento dell'architettura a tre che ha caratterizzato gli interventi della politica di coesione. Abbiamo condiviso 
un approccio basato sulla gestione concorrente, come ha sottolineato anche oggi per noi il ruolo De reale di partenariato con l'Unione Europea e quindi governi nazionali ma anche territori, governi regionali e locali è centrale. Abbiamo posto anche alcuni punti e lo vedrà poi nel parere finale che andremo ad approvare eh, l'idea che il Fondo Sociale Europeo Plus sia e continui ad essere parte integrante, lo consideriamo irrinunciabile eh, del quadro programmatico della politica europea di coesione, non si fa crescita e sviluppo dei territori se non attraverso anche l'inclusione sociale, l'istruzione, la formazione. Dobbiamo far tesoro anche dell'esperienza che abbiamo maturato nel corso degli anni a far sì che la politica di coesione interpreti le esigenze reali dei territori e quindi la mobilitazione degli attori locali sarà fondamentale. Abbiamo bisogno e abbiamo indicato e indicheremo nel nostro parere alcuni elementi di miglioramento che pensiamo siano importanti. La prima è quella di coinvolgere in modo strutturale gli enti locali e regionali come partner anche nel processo del semestre europeo. Abbiamo anche qualche preoccupazione che vorremmo fosse ascoltata, quella per esempio di vedere in questo quadro di programmazione il Fondo europeo per l'agricoltura e lo sviluppo rurale fuori dal regolamento delle disposizioni comuni. Eh, abbiamo sempre molto creduto nell'approccio integrato per i nostri territori, in modo particolare per tutte quelle comunità locali e regionali che hanno caratteristiche più rurali. E daremo una mano, noi sappiamo che sul tema amministrativo e burocratico non dipende tutto dall'Europa. La semplificazione amministrativa è importante, è importante che venga anche dalla Commissione, abbiamo apprezzato alcune proposte, le vogliamo migliorare. L'alleggerimento delle procedure burocratiche anche a livello degli Stati membri e a livello nazionale è fondamentale per rendere più agevole l'accesso alle risorse ma anche lo sfruttamento delle opportunità. E un ultimo messaggio, lo ha detto il Presidente e lo ribadisco anch'io a conclusione, la politica di... Questo parere non sarà un punto di arrivo per noi, è il punto di partenza anche di un confronto con le istituzioni europee. Non vogliamo che la politica di coesione sia solo una questione tra Bruxelles, le capitali e i nostri governi. La politica di coesione è e soprattutto una politica europea per le città e per i territori e quindi faremo sentire anche la nostra voce, la nostra posizione nel corso dei negoziati dei prossimi mesi. Grazie. Merci beaucoup. Le prochain orateur, notre collègue euh, Michel euh, Reisbermann. Dank u wel, voorzitter. En, uh, goed om u hier weer te zien, uh, eurocommissaris Kritsu. Uh, ik wil u complimenten maken voor het, uh, het goede werk wat er gedaan is door de Europese Commissie in de voorbereiding van het, uh, het, het stuk wat hier ligt. Uh, er wordt heel hard gewerkt aan uh, alles wat met het uh, cohesiebeleid te maken heeft. En we kunnen zien dat er grote stappen gemaakt zijn uh, in de vereenvoudiging. Dat, ik denk ook dat we dat kunnen zien in de steun die je van de partners in de regio's in heel uh, Europa krijgt voor de voorstellen die er zijn gedaan. Dat het uh, voorstel wat er nu ligt voor alle regio's is, is ook heel belangrijk voor, voor alle regio's. Ook voor die uh, waar ik zelf vandaan kom, de Nederlandse provincies. Hoewel we per hoofd van de bevolking het minste deel van bijvoorbeeld de EFRO-middelen krijgen, zien we toch dat ze ook bij ons heel belangrijk zijn. Daarom hechten we ook zeer, en ik begrijp dat u dat ook doet, aan het partnership principle en de partnership agreement. We zijn bang dat die, de rol van de provincies daarin, de rol van de regio's en de steden daarin, zal worden uitgehold. En dat is een van de dingen die we in het rapport dat ik geschreven heb over het EFRO en over het cohesiefonds, uh, willen benadrukken. Uh, het gaat onder andere over uh, de, de thematische concentratie, waarvan we graag zouden zien dat die meer op, de, uh, op het niveau van de regio's plaatsvindt, zodat de rol van de regio's daarbij sterk kan blijven. Verder zouden we graag meer aandacht zien in de uitvoering van uh, de, het, uh, het beleid voor uh, klimaatadaptatie, voor migratie, ook binnen Europa, niet alleen de migratie van buiten Europa naar Europa toe, maar ook die binnen Europa, waardoor bijvoorbeeld grote ontvolking in delen van Oost-Europa, u wel bekend, uh, ontstaat. Ook vragen we meer aandacht 
voor de ontwikkeling van de capaciteit bij lokale en regionale overheden. Het is niet alleen belangrijk dat de regelgeving eenvoudiger wordt, het is ook belangrijk dat de ambtenaren die ermee moeten werken beter in staat zijn om dat te doen. Uh, we, uh, bij mijn uh, gesprekken in heel Europa over dit onderwerp merk ik dat er een grote eensgezindheid is over de belang van het cohesiebeleid. Uh, of ik nou uh, praat met mensen van de Kamer van Koophandel in Klagenvoort, of uh, onder het uh, Europees voorzitterschap van Oostenrijk, of dat we hier in Brussel met elkaar praten. Uh, overal uh, zie ik dat er op dezelfde manier wordt nagedacht over het belang van cohesiebeleid. Dat is ook zo bij het Europees parlement. Toch heeft iedereen het gevoel dat het cohesiebeleid onder druk staat. Met elkaar constateren we dat dit komt door de rol die onze eigen lidstaten daarbij uh, vertegenwoordigen. Uh, wij zijn als Europese regio's graag uw partner in uw strijd uh, samen met het Europees parlement voor het behoud van een, een goed en hoogwaardig uh, regionaal beleid. En uh, zijn blij dat we u daarin kunnen steunen. Als we daar uh, iets voor u kunnen doen horen we dat natuurlijk graag. Uh, maar uh, tot dat moment uh, wens ik u alle goeds in de triloog over dit moeilijke onderwerp. Dank u wel. Merci beaucoup. Uh, le... La parole est maintenant à notre collègue Marie-Antoinette Maupertius. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, Madame la Commissaire, nous vous remercions de votre présence au moment où nous allons donner notre avis sur plusieurs propositions de la Commission relatives à la politique de cohésion post-2020. Je souhaite vous assurer que nos groupes ont travaillé de concert, non seulement pour produire des avis cohérents entre eux dans une dynamique d'intelligence collective, mais surtout des avis qui rendent compte au plus près des attentes formulées par les citoyens sur nos territoires. L'enjeu est de taille. Réussir l'après 2020, c'est, dès cette semaine, dès aujourd'hui, faire en sorte de convaincre, non pas la Commission et le Conseil, mais convaincre les eurosceptiques du fait que l'Europe, c'est aussi pour eux et non contre eux. Ainsi, parmi les attentes, figure celle déjà manifestée par le Parlement ce lundi de voir la politique de coopération territoriale maintenue dans ses volumes budgétaires, mais aussi et surtout dans ses principes et fondements. Si nous saluons l'introduction par la Commission de deux volets additionnels à l'architecture traditionnelle de la coopération territoriale européenne pour les régions ultra-périphériques et pour les, les projets d'innovation interrégionaux, les citoyens et élus que j'ai rencontrés durant ces quatre mois et encore hier après-midi considèrent que supprimer ou presque le volet Interreg Europe, c'est porter atteinte à ce qui fait l'esprit même de la coopération territoriale, porter atteinte à un outil ayant fait ses preuves de partage d'expériences concrètes et de bonnes pratiques et porter atteinte aussi à une source de valeur ajoutée européenne. Les régions maritimes sont également très inquiètes de l'inclusion de la coopération transfrontalière maritime dans le volet transnational, sachant que la moitié d'entre elles, au niveau NUTS 3, perdrait la possibilité de coopérer avec leurs voisins maritimes, si on en croit la dernière étude de la Conférence des régions périphériques et maritimes parue cette semaine. Enfin, introduire un critère de concentration de la population dans une bande de 25 km pour les dotations de la coopération transfrontalière terrestre, contrarie fortement les acteurs locaux transfrontaliers. Aussi, par ces temps de doute et d'incertitude, ne pensez-vous pas, Madame la Commissaire, qu'il faut, sur nos territoires et au plus près des citoyens, garder ce qui fonctionne, conserver ce qui rassure, valoriser ce qui unit Je vous remercie de votre attention. Merci beaucoup. La parole est maintenant à notre collègue Bouk Arends. Dank u wel, meneer de voorzitter. Mevrouw Cretu, ik wil u bedanken voor uw aanwezigheid, uw statement, maar bovenal uw betrokkenheid bij het cohesiebeleid. Telkens malen bij uw aanwezigheid hier hebben wij dat kunnen ervaren. Als gemeentebestuurder uit de Nederlandse grensregio met Duitsland ben ik verheugd over de aandacht die er in de discussie is over de toekomst van het cohesiebeleid, ook voor het grensregionale ontwikkeling en de grensoverschrijdende samenwerking. En want dit betreft immers 30 procent van de inwoners van de Europese Unie. Zelf ben ik rapporteur over het voorstel van de Europese Commissie betreffende de verordening over een grensoverschrijdend mechanisme, waardoor het makkelijker wordt 
juridische en administratieve obstakels voor gezamenlijke projecten te adresseren en op te lossen. In mijn advies benadruk ik dat we als regio's positief staan tegenover het voorstel van de Europese Commissie dat we als regio's en steden nieuwe kansen voor samenwerking zien en daarom graag met dit instrument aan de slag gaan. Samen met Interreg Financiering en de EGTS geeft dit concreet vorm aan grensoverschrijdende regionale ontwikkeling. Wel heb ik nog zorgen, meneer de voorzitter, over de, zorgen, of over de discussie in de Raad van Ministers. We zien hier namelijk dat sommige lidstaten zich terughoudend opstellen. Graag roep ik daarom ook de commissie op zich in te spannen om deze zorgen weg te nemen, zodat we een constructieve onderhandeling tegemoet kunnen zien, opdat dit instrument een waardige plek krijgt en bovenal vorm geeft aan een effectief toekomstig cohesiebeleid. Dank u wel. Merci beaucoup. La parole est à monsieur Emil Bock. Mr. President, Commissioner Crezzo, first of, first of all, I would like to congratulate you for your effort to bring the results of the cohesion policy in every corner of the European Union. And I share your vision concerning the cohesion policy for all regions and in the same time, which leaves no one behind. Few questions and one reflection. First, as a mayor of Cluj-Napoca, the second largest city in Romania, I had a chance to meet many people, many young people, and they mentioned to me that uh, they had to give up some European funds due to the complexity of the procedures, the length of the procedures, bureaucracy. So from that perspective, having in mind the new multifinancial framework, what's your message to these, new, to these young people who wants to apply for European funds, but they are burdened with bureaucracy and procedures. The second uh, question is uh, concerning, the, concerning N plus two or N plus three. I'm a strong supporter of N plus three because you know, always we started later in European Union with the procedures and all of us are willing to spend all the money. So if we have from the beginning N plus three, it would be a very clear message that we can use the European money. The third question would be an advice. I ask an advice to you, because we have a, a new instrument, financial instrument. It's called European Urban Initiative. And as a mayor, and also for my colleagues as the president of the regions, could you give, me, could you give us an advice? How can we be, be better pre prepared for this, for the first time for this uh, new instrument in order to bring money from the very beginning? And last but not least, it's a reflection. If I am correct, the cohesion policy was brought in European Union by UK, by the UK 1973. Now, UK is leaving. It's sad, of course, but the cohesion policy will stay. So what's your vision for the future concerning the future of the cohesion policy in this context? Thank you. Merci beaucoup. La parole est maintenant à notre collègue Isabelle Boudineau. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Madame la Commissaire, euh, au nom du groupe socialiste PSE, nous vous remercions vivement pour avoir été toujours aux côtés des régions et des autorités locales. Nous avons pu compter sur vous, sur votre engagement, sans, vraiment sans limite, euh, au, au bout de votre énergie, pour le maintien d'une politique de cohésion pour tous les territoires, et c'était fondamental, comme le note le rapport de Kasiuska Marini et de Michael Schneider. La condition de la cohésion, c'est que tout le monde, dans l'Europe entière, se sente concerné et se sente protégé par une politique d'investissement qui s'adresse réellement à tous. Restreindre cette politique aux seuls pays les moins développés, c'était mettre en péril la construction d'un sentiment d'appartenance à une maison commune. C'était créer des différences artificielles, des clivages, des ressentiments, Il n'y aura pas de solution au malaise social actuel qui passerait par l'opposition des uns et des autres. Les inégalités territoriales progressent cependant et elles sont flagrantes, y compris dans certains grands pays, dans des vastes régions où les territoires ruraux pensent que seules les élites des grandes métropoles profitent des fonds structurels. Pourtant, et ce sera notre combat, il faudra rappeler que la politique de cohésion n'oublie personne. 
Elle appuie et génère des investissements réellement sur tous les types de territoires. Et le rapport, encore une fois, euh, de nos collègues en parle. Toute l'existence de tous les fonds, le panachage possible entre tous les fonds, le FEDER, le FSE et le FEADER, permettent d'accompagner des investissements à la fois sur l'humain, la formation, le tissu local d'entreprise et vraiment jusque dans les campagnes avec le développement rural qui est lui aussi un pilier de la cohésion. Donc encore une fois, Madame la Commissaire, vraiment réellement merci pour votre engagement et je pense que nous vous devons beaucoup pour une proposition que nous souhaitons améliorer mais qui quand même dans ses grandes lignes nous convient. Merci beaucoup. La parole est maintenant à notre collègue Landergren. Beste kommissionär, beste ordförande och kollegor. Idag kommer regionkommittén att anta ett antal yttranden om sammanhållningspolitiken. Mitt meddelande till dig är att det råder en stor enighet i regionkommittén och bland regionerna i hela Europa. Städer och regioner vill ha en stark sammanhållningspolitik. Sammanhållningspolitiken är vårt verktyg för att främja investeringar och utveckling. Vi föreslår inte någon betydande förändring av det politiska innehållet eller finansieringen. Vi har försökt vara så konsekventa och tydliga som möjligt och har framför allt tittat på genomförande aspekterna av sammanhållningspolitiken. Den del som påverkar oss lokalt mest. Vi vill ha förenklingar och en regional tydlig förankring. Vi vill dock betona en särskild aspekt. I många yttrande föreslår vi högre mål för klimatrelaterade mål. Detta kommer inte som någon överraskning. När de senaste stora globala klimatavtalet, Parisavtalet, slits sönder av populistiska politiker på andra sidan Atlanten, när forskarsamhällena varnar oss för att tiden håller på att springa ifrån oss, Uppskattningen av konsekvenserna blir allt mer kännbara. Det är vi, de lokala och regionala myndigheterna, som kommer att ta i tur med de kritiska investeringarna mot klimatförändringarna. Jag vädjar därför till er att ta dessa frågor på allvar. Jag vill också ta upp en annan viktig fråga i EUs fonder, i synnerhet i sammanhållningsfonderna. Bör vi konsekvent främja jämlikhet? De bör främja alla aspekter av jämställdhet, men jag kommer särskilt att nämna könsaspekterna eftersom kvinnor i alla, oavsett etniska grupper eller religioner, ofta utsätts för direkt diskriminering när det gäller att få tillgång till de viktigaste EU-medlen. Aldergruppen efterlyser därför att vi ska satsa på en jämställdhetsbudgetering i alla skeden av genomförandet av EUs sammanhållningspolitik. Och varför gör vi det? Jo, annars så kommer vi gå stort miste om nya innovationer och nya typer av företag. Så glöm inte jämställdhetsfokuset. Tack! Merci beaucoup. La parole est maintenant à Pavel Brand. Dear Commissioner uh, Kretsu, uh, it is a uh, pleasure to address you as an ECR political coordinator in the Cotter uh, Commission. We have seen each other many times over the last uh, few years, uh, but it's still an honor for, for us to welcome you here among us, among regions and cities. Uh, the legislative process, um, uh, the proposals are on the table. Uh, we have behind us the preparation phase, uh, long many discussions about the future of cohesion policy. And we appreciate very much that we have been treated as real and equal partners in this process. Uh, we have been listened to. Uh, as you know, I've been the rapporteur uh, on people-to-people -people projects in cross-border cooperation programs and have put a lot of effort to anchor these projects uh, in the regulation. And the Commission took our own initiative opinion on board already in the drafting stage of the Interreg regulation and these projects, essential for our communities, are for the first time part of the regulation. Just one example of uh, good cooperation that we have. But now the real work on the legislative process uh, is going on. 
with the greater role of the European Parliament and also the Council. We will need uh, your help that we are still included as real equal partners in the approval process, but what is even more important, in the programming process, in the implementation phase of the, of the cohesion policy. We need to make sure that uh, the money at the end comes to our regions and cities and matches the real investment needs at the local and regional level. And this can be achieved only by fully respecting the partnership uh, principle in the whole process. Let me have only, I have 30 seconds left, one more uh, suggestion for the, for the future. I think we need to change the way we communicate the results, the impacts of the cohesion policy. It is, its great added value is that it reaches uh, to the smallest municipality at the periphery of the member state. Uh, it, it touches the lives of uh, almost every, every citizen. Um, so uh, it is not enough just to put an EU flag or a poster uh, to the project, but we need to really invest into making the real benefits and impacts on people's lives being well known in the future. Thank you very much for your attention. Merci beaucoup. La parole est maintenant à notre collègue Kirian McCarthy. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, dear Commissioner, uh, dear honorary member of the Committee of the Regions at this stage, um, Many thanks for your commitment to defending cohesion policy uh, and the urban agenda for the EU. Um, as rapporteur on the EU urban agenda, um, I certainly welcome the Commission proposal to dedicate 6% of ERDF for investments in sustainable urban development and the new European Urban uh, Initiative. Um, the, urban, the urban agenda offers too much potential to improve the way in which our cities will work in the future. I see it strongly tied to the future of European debate. Um, the experience acquired in the Urban Agenda Partnerships has achieved positive results and real results uh, in terms of multi-level governance actions. Um, and the Urban Agenda should not be more than just a mere networking exercise. Otherwise, we'll have, you'll have much disillusionment among the cities that act, and, and regions and member states that actually take part. Um, the Urban Agenda can serve as a reference to improve the subsidiarity check and to enhance the link with better regulation. The Urban Agenda Partnerships can highly contribute to define policies that serve the needs um, of cities of all sizes. Um, Madam Commissioner, yesterday I found myself in Vienna at a Housing Partnership Action Plan conference and the number of ideas that was coming out and that in this two-day meeting was incredible. And it would be an awful pity if those were actually just thrown to one side. Um, so we, we can't have this like mere networking ex ex um, exercise. Um, the urban agenda can support positive economic, social and environmental links between urban and rural areas by strengthening regional and urban planning. The urban agenda now needs a plan taking the action plans forward. Um, and so my question, uh, Madam Commissioner, is what are your thoughts on the EU urban agenda going forward beyond the action plans? Many thanks. Je cède maintenant la parole à notre premier vice-président, Marco Marcula. Um, Mr. President, uh, Madam Commissioner, dear Corina, uh, let me stress and highlight a few of the key things. So uh, now we are putting the frame for the financial uh, elements, uh, components in the cohesion policy. Co cohesion policy is above all it's a transformation instrument very strong but cohesion policy is as well bringing much of the content and when we look what the lessons we have learned during the uh, this program period so uh, cohesion policy needs to be much more uh, and better integrated the use of other eu instruments uh, uh, let's take uh, uh, horizon europe uh, uh, digital europe uh, and the others, but it needs to be much better integrated at the local and regional level to the public and private financing that uh, uh, cohesion policy in uh, financing can bring. Cohesion financing is above all catalyzing and enabling these bigger investments on a targeted measures. And uh, there I want to stress heavily the lessons with the smart specialization strategies because that has meant already strongly European regions are collaborating very much more than uh, ever before. And there it's, it's important so that uh, one of those issues in the debate has been what cross-border means. 
we stress here, I think, unanimously, heavily, that it's, it's uh, land and maritime as well. Of course, that, and, and from that perspective, this uh, element needs to be kept. But on the other hand, so what is in your component five, the very important element of this uh, really interregional innovative collaboration. Uh, if the outcome in the negotiations will be that that component uh, disappears, I'm very uh, afraid so that uh, the target of that will disappear as well. So try to find a good solution and anyhow in all of the components so that this dimension is strongly there that regions who have started to be forerunners both in European partnerships but as well integrating cities to work with their local rural communities and with the local industry they can create so that we can achieve the, uh, let's put in a bigger frame, uh, the change for the, uh, the climate, what we want to achieve. The UN Sustainable Development Goals are an important target for all of us. We need more concrete results in the next program period. You can do really a lot. Merci beaucoup. La parole est maintenant encore à cinq collègues. Et je signale qu'il y a une minute de temps de parole pour euh, chacune et chacun. Nous commençons avec euh, le collègue euh, Gamalo Aller. Muchas gracias, señor presidente, señora comisaria, bienvenida. Muchas gracias por estar entre nosotros una vez más. Demuestra que sus objetivos y sus responsabilidades son coincidentes con las personas que nos encontramos en esta Cámara. Yo eh, quiero decir que participo de muchas de las propuestas del señor Marini, de la señora Marini y del señor Schneider en su dictamen en lo que se refiere a política de cooperación territorial, especialmente la cooperación transfronteriza o la cuestión demográfica. Pero me quiero centrar ahora es una cuestión que afecta especialmente a mi región, a la región que represento, que es Galicia en España. Hay otras regiones europeas que también están implicadas en la misma circunstancia. Y es la paradoja de que nuestro, a pesar de que nuestro Producto Interno Bruto disminuye 10 puntos respecto al periodo anterior, al pasar de ser región más desarrollada a ser región en transición, nuestra asignación se vería reducida en más de un 40% según el método de cálculo propuesto en el anexo 22 del Reglamento de Disposiciones Comunes. Y esto es debido, en parte, al tratamiento específico que estamos recibiendo en el actual periodo por haber pasado por primera vez del grupo de las menos desarrolladas al grupo de las más desarrolladas. Por tanto, hablamos de una doble sanción. Bajamos en Producto Interno Bruto y, al mismo tiempo, bajamos en asignación lo que es absolutamente contrario, estará usted de acuerdo, al objetivo, al espíritu de la política de cohesión. Por tanto, estamos trabajando con los parlamentarios para intentar que ninguna región que descienda de categoría pueda perder fondos europeos. Esto supone un 0,01%. Y está, estamos seguros que Merci beaucoup. Le temps de parole est nuestra... dépassé. La parole est maintenant a notre collègue Birgit Oné. Ja, Frau Kommissarin Kretzu, auch von mir ganz herzlichen Dank für Ihren Einsatz für die Kohäsionspolitik und dass Sie heute hier sind. Ich habe vier Punkte, die ich ansprechen möchte. Erstens ist es auch für meine Region außerordentlich wichtig, dass die Kofinanzierungssätze stabil bleiben und nicht unter 70 Prozent rutschen. Der Kollege Schneider hat darauf hingewiesen, dass es auch bei uns sehr unterschiedliche leistungsfähige Regionen gibt. Zweiter Punkt. Auch ich spreche mich ausdrücklich für N plus 3 aus, weil wir für unsere Projekte auch eine langfristige Planungssicherheit brauchen. Wir stellen ja auch Weichen damit und insofern brauchen wir die Planungssicherheit. Der dritte Punkt bezieht sich auf Folgendes. Mein Bundesland hat bereits in der laufenden Förderperiode ein Multiformprogramm aus ESF und EFRA aufgelegt, denn die Herausforderungen gerade in den ländlichen Räumen sind nicht eindimensional, sondern nur durch ein intelligentes Ineinander von verschiedenen Fachpolitiken zu leisten. Und im Sinne so einer integrierten Regionalpolitik sollte auch der ELA dringend wieder in die Dachverordnung aufgenommen werden. Auch die Kollegin Marini hat darauf
darauf schon hingewiesen, das ist ein wichtiges Anliegen für uns. Der vierte Punkt, auf den ich eingehen möchte, es ist mir auch ein, von ganz zentraler Bedeutung, dass die Kürzungen, auch die raumbezogenen Veränderungen in Interreg-Programmen zurückgenommen werden, denn gerade diese Interreg-Programme überwinden Grenzen und stärken die transnationale Zusammenarbeit und machen so die europäische Le temps de Arbeit passé, je, und Idee an die Frage. Parole maintenant à notre collègue uh, Droba. Uh, dear Madam Commissioner, uh, I would like to ask you about the CPR draft regulation, which uh, under the new proposal proposes that the VAT uh, would be eligible cost only for the projects of up to 5 million euros. And the stipulation of this maximum threshold for the VAT as an eligible cost could lead to the lowering of the attractiveness of the programs for the applicants, particularly for the strategic infrastructure projects, which, uh, by the way, is also pointed out by the opinion of the European uh, Committee of Regions. Uh, Non-eligibility of the VAT, especially in the combination of the lowered co-financing, may lower the competitiveness of the cohesion policy in relation to the EFCSI uh, financing. And it could also motivate the applicants to split the projects so that they don't exceed 5 million euros. Therefore, I would like to ask you what was the main motivation of the Commission to propose this rule? And what would be the consequences of uh, maintaining and keeping the current rules of the VAT eligible, eligibility? Thank you. Merci beaucoup. La parole est maintenant notre collègue Michaela Fanelli. Grazie, Presidente. Grazie ancora alla Commissaria della sua presenza qui, anche nei lavori che abbiamo più volte seguito insieme. Quindi, bene per tutto l'impegno che è stato messo. Ci accingiamo a una fase determinante, finale, nella quale vorremmo migliorare ulteriormente, così come sono sicura che il parere generale sui regolamenti oggi farà il lavoro che state compiendo. Il metodo. Portiamo un parere in approvazione con la sostanziale unanimità di tutti i membri. E speriamo che questo oggi verrà confermato, perché è un grande risultato che gli enti territoriali diano un contributo unitario. Siamo, questi, siamo per questo certi che verrà accolta favorevolmente nella parte sostanziale. Più coesione, più coesione per le città e le aree rurali. Pongo un accendo come qualcuno ha già svolto sul punto, in particolare su questo aspetto. Agenda urbana, lo ricordava il collega è un elemento importante che abbiamo sperimentato e che va potenziato. All'interno dei regolamenti attuativi, in particolare del regolamento del Fondo di Sviluppo Regionale, c'è un indirizzo specifico su questo, è molto importante. Vorremmo che fosse... Il tempo di parole è dipassato, io do la parola al nostro collega Agorastos. Vorremmo che fosse accompagnato da Agenda Rurale. Grazie. Ευχαριστώ κύριε Πρόεδρε. Κυρία Επίτροπο, σας ευχαριστούμε πολύ για τις πραγματικά δημιουργικές υπηρεσίες τις οποίες προσφέρατε. Με ταχύτητα, δημιουργικότητα, συνεργασία και συνέργεια καταφέραμε πάρα πολλά να επιτύχουμε και μάλιστα να κάνουμε και πράγματα από τα οποία φανταζόταν αδύνατα στο παρελθόν. Κύριε και κύριοι, το... η νέα πολιτική συνοχή πρέπει να είναι γρήγορη εφαρμόσιμη, συνεργατική, αποτελεσματική. Και θα πρέπει να προεξοφλεί το μέλλον και όχι να μελοποιεί το, παρελ... το παρόν. Και βέβαια, χρειάζονται τέτοιες πολιτικές, ούτως ώστε να χτυπηθεί η γραφειοκρατία, η κακονομία, η πολιονομία και οπωσδήποτε να δώσει μια ταχύτητα. Γιατί ο χρόνος είναι θέσει εργασία που λείπουν από την Ευρώπη, είναι χρήμα στην πραγματική οικονομία που λείπει από την πραγματική οικονομία της Ευρώπης. Για να πετύχουμε, πρέπει να ακολουθήσουμε το μότο. Be the change you wish to see in the Europe. Thank you. Merci beaucoup pour toutes ces interventions. Et je m'excuse encore une fois d'avoir été strict sur le temps de parole, mais il n'y a pas d'autre choix. Et je crois que nous finirons quand même un jour à avoir assez d'entraînement pour réussir cet exercice. Sans tarder, 
Je donne la parole à Madame la Commissaire pour répondre à tout ce qui a été soulevé comme remarques et questions. Thank you once again, Mr. President. Uh, thank you, members. Uh, it has been uh, very interesting to hear you. You know that uh, we had uh, ongoing discussions uh, during the last uh, year, so I know that uh, we have supported each other uh, on local uh, development, but also we have uh, some different, different approaches uh, and I would, uh, I would try to respond to some issues uh, that um, are raised uh, here to explain uh, the proposal of the Commission submitted to the European Parliament and the Council uh, in, on the 2nd of May. So, but I would like just to underline that uh, this is uh, our proposal, the European Commission proposal, which is now in the hands of co-legislators, European Parliament and the Council. And, uh, If you would like to change some things, uh, you have to work with your members of European Parliament and also with your governments, with the member states, with the people, prime minister or presidents who represent your countries in uh, 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 European Council. Um, but you know very well that uh, there are um, ongoing discussions in these institutions. I had. Uh, last uh, Friday European Council with the uh, 28 ministers uh, from, uh, for cohesion policy. Uh, also, I know that in the European Parliament, uh, many of these issues are still in play. So, uh, of course, uh, as always, I count on you uh, to produce a strong uh, opinion uh, uh, in favor, uh, of course, uh, with good arguments. Uh, I really always um, uh, uh, I, uh, value so much our cooperation between European Commission and Committee of the Regions. Uh, so I will take one by one uh, some of your questions. On 5 plus 2 programming, um, I think uh, we are not uh, uh, too far apart. I know you still have some uh, reservations. Uh, But uh, I know that, in principle, you really support uh, the principle of flexibility to uh, adapt to emer emerging circumstances. So uh, let's see how we will uh, we'll, uh, put this flexibility principle in uh, practice. As I said, our proposal is to have a, a review, not to take from the, from the beginning, as Mr. Schneider said, it's not our intention, to take everything from the beginning after five years, because we already have projects that are working in different programming periods. But if we have different needs, or if we cannot uh, spend all the money in five years, we can make much more easier this transfer from access, uh, one axis to another. This is behind our reasons of five plus two. On pre-financing and co-financing, uh, Of course, I have noted uh, your concerns about our proposal, uh, uh, and um, I believe that um, uh, this is a very pragmatic response, uh, enabling, uh, enabling us to maintain spending with a smaller budget. Uh, in our view, um, uh, raising co-financing promotes ownership on the ground, and uh, I would point out that our uh, co-financing proposal Uh, simply uh, not something new, is to return to pre-crisis levels when we had the same uh, level of uh, co-financing. Uh, we were thinking that with a smaller budget that we have now, we can, and after uh, so many years of economic growth in a row, we can come back to the, to the pre-crisis levels. But uh, of course, as I said once again, I see in the European Parliament that It's uh, like here, uh, some opposition to our proposal. Let's see how will be the final vote. Uh, on thematic concentration, uh, I think uh, uh, we have to, we have this necessity to uh, concentrate uh, on, uh, on some priorities for growth and jobs. Uh, we, we do not innovate and adapt uh, our regions uh, uh, We have to be competitive for uh, tomorrow's economy. 
So it is also a necessity to um, to concentrate on the environment. We have to adapt to green, low carbon economy. Uh, you know very well that last week the Commission adopted the Clean Planet for All uh, Communication. Climate climate change uh, it's an urgent concern. The thematic concentration it proposes a flexible system. Uh, the categories are broader than in the previous uh, period, and it's up to the member states, to the regions, to make the defi definitions of these categories. So it is easier to move uh, funding within broad um, uh, um, areas. They are also cover a wider range of, uh, of, of, uh, of teams. To return to M plus uh, two, I have noted uh, uh, again your concern. The simplification measure we have taken will uh, speed uh, implementation. We have a lot of uh, criticism uh, from uh, about delays, um, especially simplification in designation and the ability to roll funds over between uh, periods. This will um, uh, make it much easier to achieve the N plus two. So uh, the Commission believes that uh, the return to N plus two is possible. Simplification has made it possible. And uh, I also believe that the return to N plus two will be good for the reputation of our policy, which is so much attacked in, uh, in the last uh, period. Um, on the interreg, uh, I uh, sh uh, truly share your view that it's a very important issue. It's about, as you said, 30 million um, citizens who lived uh, on the borders uh, between countries. I am very fond on this cross-border cooperation. We visited together the region of uh, Karl Heinz, which is a region of three countries, not only two countries, cross-border cooperation. I know that there is a concern, uh, especially on the maritime component, seeing of the president of Azores, who is staying here in front of me. We had the pleasure and we have discussed in length last week in the Canary Islands during the outermost conference uh, this problem. Uh, and I would like to make also in front of you very clear the fact that the Commission is still uh, fully committed to the maritime cooperation. Uh, I, on. Um, on other issue, urban dimension, uh, you know that uh, the Common Provision Regulation has a new dedicated policy objective, uh, Europe closer to citizens by fostering the sustainable and integrated development of urban, uh, rural and coastal areas through local initiative, which should allow for well-integrated multi-sectorial approach to urban development. And uh, you know that in the new proposal, at least 6% of ERDF resources are dedicated to sustainable urban development. Uh, so, which I think is very important uh, to allow uh, mayors and cities to design their own uh, strategy because you know better uh, than us in Brussels and sometimes better than the capitals what is needed and what is not needed. Uh, to respond to, to what is uh, urban initiative, the European uh, uh, Urban Initiative brings a new, new coherent approach to cities as all urban tours are combined in a single program under uh, indirect management by the Commission. So uh, we uh, would, would like to put together all the instruments and programs like uh, Urban Act, uh, Urban Innovation Act uh, actions, Urban Development Network knowledge providers, and the different govern, uh, governing mechanisms dedicated to urban policy. It is uh, planned to be managed in indirect uh, management, similarly to the current arrangements on the urban innovative actions. And I can tell you all that we are here to help. We are at your disposal. Now we have a single point in the DG Regio dealing with urban. It's not fragmented between different DGs. So any questions you have, please don't hesitate to ask uh, DG, DG regions. So um, on VIT, the VIT provisions in 2014-2020 created legal uncertainty and led to many interpretation questions and guidance from program authorities. 
that, that uh, provisions refer to national VAT rules and the notion of whether the VAT is recoverable or not. Uh, and that creates difficulties given the, um, the differences of VAT uh, national rules in the member states. That why to make it simpler for beneficiaries and program authorities, we propose a very simple rule for projects below 5 million uh, total cost uh, that VAT is eligible, while for those which are above, it's, uh, it's not eligible. So it will not depend on the national VAT legislation anymore. The majority of supported pro uh, projects in terms of their numbers for European commissions are below of total cost of 5 million. So this is a simplification for uh, the majority of beneficiaries. So, uh, at the same time, the biggest uh, financial volume in terms of VAT is related to projects above 5 million, which is ineligible of VAT, but uh, help, here we help safeguarding the cohesion policy budget for investments. Um, about the uh, gender issue, which is very close to, to my heart. Um, actually, uh, I think it's... Uh, it's good that we have in the CPR uh, this uh, gender equality uh, or non-discrimination, the horizontal principles, but it has uh, to be said that uh, it does not matter whether we refer uh, uh, or not to this, because uh, these uh, principles uh, need to be, to be respected as they are... Uh, uh, in the Aki Communitaire for uh, all the countries, and we also have the Charter of Fundamental Rights, uh, uh, and uh, this should be evoked in this uh, in this context. Uh, so we prefer razor, uh, razor than just be flagged uh, at the beginning to make it workable in the programming priorities, in the partnership, uh, in the implementation of the projects. It's very interesting. Your your um, uh, idea for a dedicated uh, uh, fund. We also plan uh, that uh, starting with the next year to, because we have so many elections, including local elections, to fight for uh, uh, a campaign uh, for more women, uh, especially in the public administration, because I see that uh, many of them, uh, they don't run for mayors or uh, for the councillor. And I really hope to have all your men in our, in, in, uh, on our board uh, in this campaign that we would like to start uh, next year for more women in uh, public uh, administration. About uh, uh, Brexit, you know very well that the Commission uh, uh, proposed a with, uh, withdrawal arrangement. Uh, so, uh, we are waiting for the decision of the UK Parliament. Of course, it's a very sad situation. We had this policy which was uh, proposed uh, and imposed by Italy and the UK in '75 when the mines in the wells were closed. And now, of course, we have to wait to see how we can go together uh, in the 27 formula uh, with Brexit or... Uh, Let's see what is the result on the 11th of December by the House of Commons. Final remarks, um, uh, I would like to tell you that I am always hearing your concerns. Uh, I know that we, we are all here friends of cohesion. And uh, we will look further into your concern how to adapt of our resources, of our possibilities. I am very glad that all of you are... Uh, um, with us in the simplification uh, process uh, because uh, for four years I hear the same complaints wherever I go about bureaucracy, about the complexity. We propose more than 80 uh, measures of simplification and I'm very glad to see that you support us. But it's very important to be supported also by the member states because if we uh, simplify here uh, at, in the regulations, which is even as the volume is uh, half of that, what we have now. But if we continue to make gold, uh, gold plating in the member states, will not succeed to make the life of beneficiaries much more easier. Um, easier. And at the end of the day, this is our common tax. 
uh, I really hope that uh, as uh, I see you as uh, our friends, you also hear the European Commission and myself as a friend. When I say on some issues, we may have uh, little room to move. You can understand the circumstances, uh, circumstances, the new priorities, the challenges that we have. Uh, so you can count on me that I do whatever I can inside the Commission and inside of the European Council to have an agreement as soon as possible because here timing is very tight. I just come from, uh, from the college where we have the Romanian government and we all hope that the next multi-annual financial framework together with the regulation to be adopted before European elections. This will be ideal to be uh, able to start uh, all the programs from the 1st of January 2021. Um, I am not sure that all member states learned from the lesson of the past, and, uh, uh, and I'm afraid if we go after European elections, we again uh, postpone the adoption of the legislation. We will again start the implementation of the projects with the delays. So really, I think we have to have a common, uh, common uh, battle to find a final agreement before European, uh, uh, um, uh, before U European elections. So um, I believe uh, um, I would like to congratulate for your report, uh, uh, for the rapporteurs and for all your work. I am very grateful to you that uh, you fight like us for a policy for all regions in partnership with regions with a strong local development uh, uh, perspective, a policy which helps regions modernize and transform to a modern green economy, a simpler policy, easier for partners, quicker to implement, so thank you once again to all of you, Mr. President, Mr. President. Thank you for our work, and uh, let's see how we can achieve uh, in the in the uh, last uh, part of our mandate. I wish you good luck in everything you are doing. I think it's the last meeting for this year. So have a wonderful holidays, uh, well-deserved holidays, in, uh, and uh, all the best to you and your families. And thank you for your efforts to achieve together to improve the life of the people in our regions, in our cities, in our European Union. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, Madame la Commissaire. Voilà un bon débat qui a introduit notre travail d'aujourd'hui. Nous essayerons de fournir les résultats qu'il faut pour que l'année prochaine, après les fêtes, pour lesquels nous vous souhaitons aussi tout, euh, le meilleur, nous puissions redémarrer notre travail avec euh, l'intention d'achever tout ce que nous avons commencé ensemble. Merci beaucoup et à bientôt.